Right then, you join us today on the canal for a spot of chop worm and caster fishing. So, where do we approach in the peg? You want to be looking for the deepest part of the peg, really. Right. Yeah, for the deepest part of the, the peg, really, which is normally either down the track, it's going to be close in or further out, depending on how the canal's designed. So today, we've had a little plumb up, and the deepest part of the, the peg is over towards the, the far side. So the rigs I select for chop worm and caster fishing. <coughs> the first rig will be a commercial style rugby ball shape uh, float. It's got a nice thick bristle on it, either 2mm or 1.5mm bristle to suspend, uh, to take the weight of the bait. This rig has got a bulk and then two droppers. It's on 015 mainline and it's got an 013 bottom to a size 16 B520. It's a nice strong hook with a decent barb on it. Next, we've got a Garbolino caster float. So, the reason I use this, this kind of float, you can dot it right down and this will be for the caster. So you're looking for them small little dibs and they're the great, these great big roach. This is on 012 main line. It's got a nice strung bulk of number 11s in the bottom half of the rig, strung right out, and then it's got six inch of 08 down to a size 20 carbon match. It's a nice fine wire hook, um, so the caster falls as, as naturally as it can. The next float is exactly the same, 4x14s, Garbolino caster float. It's on the same main line. This time, we've got a strung bulk, but it's of number 10s this time. Just so, if we do start catching quicker, that caster will fall even faster down to an 010 bottom with a 16 carbon match. Okay, so plumbing the peg up. So we're gonna go to the halfway point in the canal where the boat channel normally is. Just drop the plummet down and then just work our way across the canal. Just slowly moving across. And as we're moving across now, it's getting deeper and deeper. There we go. So that's a little drop off there and that's into the boat channel. The boat channel is normally down the centre of a canal but on this canal it's just slightly past halfway so we're going to pull pull the float back into the boat channel make sure our depth set correctly. You just want the body of the float sticking out the water and that'll do us. We're just going to start on that worm head because if there's any decent fish in the peg you're going to catch them straight away. That's what normally happens. They'll either spook out or they'll come straight to the bait. We're just going to lower it in nice and slowly. 
then once it is in the peg, just leave it for small periods of time, a couple of minutes at a time, and then just lift and drop, just to try and catch the attention of a fish. And I'll just alternate between the right and left swim, where we've cooked in them few worms and some casters. Maybe for half an hour while the peg's resting, or settling, should I say. That was a small knock then. I think there's a few roach in the peg. I'm just going to give it another couple of minutes. Well, that was a small knock then. Yeah. And he's like, oh, and he's off. Oh. Okay, so just lay your rigging downstream, just hold it tight, upstream of the toe, and then just hold it tight and wait for your bite, just like that. So, just like any other roach fishing, all we're going to do is constantly lift and drop, now and again take it all out of the water and just swing it back in and just hold on to that rig, pull it upstream so the caster falls on a tight line and then just, just alternate it so every now and again lift and drop and then feed so your caster's always falling through the water. Then Roach will watch it fall all the way down and they'll take it just as it touches the bottom nine times out of ten. If they don't, just leave it hanging for I don't know a minute or so and then just lift and drop again.
Right, and the, when you are fishing for roach with the caster, nine times out of ten, the best bites from the biggest fish will be tiny little dibs on the float, and they're the ones you want to be striking at. Oh, that was a little dib. Fish on. The peg went a bit quiet about 10 minutes ago. I've potted in about 30 casters over the top and I've swept over, swapped over to the double caster. We're just laying on about 2 inch and hopefully, oh, that was a little knock then. Hopefully, because it went quiet, means a bigger fish has moved into the peg. So swap into a double caster. We'll pick that fish out. Hope that, well, that's the plan anyway. We'll just have to see. Let's keep dripping in a bit of bait. Just to attract them fish back into the peg. Keep lifting and dropping. Oh. I'm sure that's not them roach. I'm just going to leave it to bury this time and hopefully one of them great big things is on. I'm still mad in this is because I know there's a big fish in the peg. I'm just know it. Right, I've just swapped over to a double caster because the peg went a bit quiet. I've just cooked in about 20 casters and I'm just going to sit on top of it. I'm going to leave the float to, to go under for about 3 seconds. I'm not going to strike, make sure I eat a bite if I do have one. And normally they're proper fish on the double caster. But because it's a bigger bait, oh, yes, oh, that's a better fish, definitely. Oh, it feels like a skimmer. Yes, go on. Right, we've got this skimmer on now, and it's beautiful. You can see it about four foot under the water. And that's the beauty of using these light rigs strung out on these clear canals because the bigger fish watch it all the way down to the bottom and they'll just grab it. Just make sure you count at least two seconds before you strike. 
and that'll ensure that you you'll come properly. You don't want these coming off in your peg because they'll ruin the peg. Come on. Oh, look at that. Come on. Oh, big bar of gold. Yes, come on, get in. two ways a hooker caster can go straight through the top and out of the side leave plenty of hooks showing just like that and then the next way to hook a caster is burying it so this time what we're going to do is go straight through the top but instead of pulling it out the side, we're just going to push the hook inside the caster. I'll show you now. Straight through the top, push the shank of the hook inside the caster, just like that. The benefits of doing this is the fish can't see the hook, but you do tend to miss more bites. Okay, the way I hook a double caster straight through the top come out of the side and then with the second one we're just going to nick the top of it and pull it alongside the other caster try not to burst the caster there we go leave plenty of hooks showing or as much as you can once you lay your rigging just give it like half a dozen casters without going into too much detail on average the caster takes about three seconds per foot of water so you want to fire some casters in just after you, you lay your rig in and then once you think the casters touch the bottom lay it in again so you're either going to catch the fish before your casters touch the bottom or you're going to catch the fish just after your casters touch the bottom if that makes sense that's normally when you catch the fish your bait will never fall at the same rate as the casters because you've got shot down the line you've got a hook inside the caster so your caster is always going to be heavier than the casters that are falling through the water so you need to try and fall the fish into taking the bait oh not that one right then i've had a lovely few hours on the canal i've packed up because i'm absolutely freezing but just follow them few simple tips swapping between the rigs Make sure you've got enough rigs to cover what you need to do. Because even though you think the fish aren't there, they are there, but they just want the, the cast at or the, the worm in a different way with, with a different rig. And just keep alternating and you'll have a fantastic day, I'm sure. We've had, um, well, there's, out, there's, there's 20 pound there, easy. Of quality roach. We even managed to snare a nice skimmer on our caster rig. Absolutely full of big roach. Well, they're four or five ounces. But let's get them back now.